Well, let's see if we can figure out a way of summing up consecutive terms from a geometric sequence. So geometric sequence is where we have that common ratio appearing and recurring and recurring. And so to inspire that, let's actually take a look and see if we can generate a formula for it. So let's write down the first few terms. I'm going to call it, let's say, S. And I'll put a subscript N here, because I'll put down N terms, and I'm going to add them all up. So S sub N is the sum of N terms here, starting with the first one, A1. Then I add the next term in a geometric sequence, so that would be A1R. Then the next term would be what? It would be A1R squared, because so I keep multiplying. And then the last term would be, since I have N of them, A1R to the N minus 1. Because remember that if I have N, the formula is A1R to the N minus 1. That's the nth term. Now, I'm going to actually make a little assumption here. It would be really not at all exciting or interesting or anything if r were to be the number 1. Let's look at why. If r were just the number 1, then all these r to powers would just be 1, right? 1, 1 squared is 1, 1 to the n minus 1 is still 1. So this would be a whole bunch of just a1s, a1, 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 and there'd be n of them. So this sum would be easy. It would be n times a1. So let me now make the uh, more interesting assumption that r is not the number 1. OK, now armed with that, I'd love to know what this equals. I don't know how to do this, but what I will do is I will try to see if I could simplify the issue. Remember, when you're faced with something that seems almost impossible, try to simplify it. What makes this difficult for me personally? What makes it difficult for me personally are these dot, dot, dots. The fact that I have all these terms and I have no idea how many I have exactly, and i got to add them up, this seems hopeless. So when the going gets tough, the tough leave. And then what you try to do is to see if you can do something that's easier. Now watch what happens when I take this thing I have here and multiply it by r. So I'm going to take this sum. I'm trying to figure out what s sub n is. I'm trying to solve for s sub n. But I'm going to instead multiply everything through by r. Now this is a trick. There's no reason why this should obviously do anything for us at all. But watch what happens when I do that. On this side, I'm going to have r times s sub n. So that's what I get when I multiply this side by r. Now I've got to multiply the right-hand side by r, which means r times all of that. But what does that mean? It means I've got to distribute r times this, r times that, r times that, r times that, and so on. When I take this term and multiply it by an r, it becomes a1r. So this term right here, I'll just write it here, a1r. It's just that term, I multiplied it by r. Now I've got to take this term and multiply it by r. That's a1r squared. And I keep doing that. I get to the penultimate term here, which is a1r to the n minus 2. When I actually multiply that by r, I then have r to the n minus 1. a1r to the n minus 1. But then I've got that last term, which I have to multiply that by r, which is a1r to the n. Well, it doesn't look too helpful, except you'll notice that these middle terms all line up perfectly now. So all that mystery stuff seems to be appearing twice. And so if I took all of this and subtract, let's see what happens. Here I have Sn minus Rsn. So what is that? Well, that's just Sn minus Rsn. And when I subtract here, what do I see? Well, I see A1 minus 0. That's just A1. But then what do I see here? I see a1r minus a1r. That's 0. I see a1r squared minus a1r squared. That's 0. All these terms cancel up to this term. a1r to the n minus 1 cancels. And I'm left with that one term, which don't forget, I'm subtracting this minus that. So that's actually now negative. It's going to be negative, so minus the last term. Well, this is great because all the dot, dot, dots now have gone away. I can solve for Sn by factoring it out here. And I would have 1 minus r times Sn. That's what I get if I factor that out. There's that 1 in front, invisible 1, minus r times Sn. And that equals a1 times 1 minus rn. And I can now solve. And if I now solve, what I see is, Sn 
equals a1 times 1 minus r to the n, all divided by 1 minus r. And so that is the sum. And remember what that was. That represented the sum of the first n terms here. So if you want to add up the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence, then all you've got to do is take the first term, multiply it by 1 minus that common ratio raised to the n power, and divide that by 1 minus r. And if you do that, you'll get the answer. Notice how important it was now that r was not the number 1. See, if r were the number 1, I'd be dividing by 0, and we know that is not good, not allowed. So it was good we made that little proviso up at front, because otherwise this wouldn't be defined at all. So this is now the formula for finding the sum of a geometric sequence, if you have n terms. So let's take a look at an example. In fact, and you see how it goes. In fact, you know, quite frankly, I don't memorize this. I, don't, I swear to you I do not memorize that. All I do is memorize this trick, and I write out the terms, and I multiply it by r, and then I see everything cancel when I subtract, and I always rederive it. That's what I do. I swear that's true. If you like that, that's great. But if you can memorize it, then that's fine too. OK, let's try some examples. For example, suppose I tell you that a1 equals 3 and r equals 2. And I want to find out the sum of the first eight terms. If I want to find out the sum of the first eight terms, I'm actually wanting to find s sub 8. Well, I could write out the first eight terms. I start with 3, then 3 times 2, then 3 times 2 squared, then 3 times 2 cubed, and so forth, and add them all up. Or I can just apply this formula, which says I take the first term, which is 3, 1 minus r, which is 2, raised to the power 8. And I divide that by 1 minus r, which is 2. And what does this give me? Well, this gives me 3 times 1 minus 256. That's what, eight, that's what 2 to the 8th is, right? 2 times 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 2 is 256. Divided by negative 1. So what does this equal? Well, this works out to be 765. So that's great. I found out the sum of the first eight terms without ever having to actually go through the process of listing all eight terms and add them all up. I was able to do this, boom, in one fell swoop. So that's really, really neat. Now, I want to show you one last really cool thing about this. Let's now suppose now that the r is not that big. In absolute value, it's less than 1. What does that mean? It means that r is some number between negative 1 and 1. right? If the absolute value of r is less than 1, that means that on a number line, it's between minus 1 and 1. So it lives right in here. Doesn't equal negative 1 doesn't equal 1, but it's all points in between, all points in between. So let's suppose that that's what r is. So that ratio, that ratio is something that's like, you know, a half, a third, or negative, negative two-thirds, or something like that. Now, if you looked at the geometric series that would have a ratio that an absolute value was less than 1, Take a look at this answer for the sum of the first n terms. And let's ask ourselves, what happens as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger? Meaning, I add more and more and more and more terms. Well, let's see. This is just always the first term. I'm dividing by 1 minus the ratio, so that's always fixed. As I increase n, the only occurrence of n is here. So it's r to the n. So I'm taking a number that's less than 1 in absolute value and raising it to higher and higher and higher powers. Let's think about that. Let's take a half, for example. I have a half. If I square it, I get a fourth. Notice that a fourth is actually smaller than a half. If I cube it, I get an eighth. That's even smaller. If it raises to the fourth power, I get a sixteenth. What's happening as the n gets bigger and bigger? As the n gets bigger and bigger, this number right here is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's heading toward the number 0. So in fact, as I let the n get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, this thing is heading towards 0, getting closer and closer and closer to 0. What does that mean? It means that 
if you want to add up all the terms, infinitely many of the terms, not just the first hundred terms, not just the first thousand terms, but all of the terms, infinitely many, you can actually figure it out. What would be the sum of all the terms? The sum of infinitely many, well, this would just head to 0. And you're left with this formula, a1 divided by 1 minus r. And this is so weird, because now we can actually add up infinitely many things infinitely many things. Even though it sounds like, wait a minute, if you add up infinitely many things, wouldn't it be infinite? The answer is no, because since this ratio is small, the terms are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So each little contribution that I'm adding is so small that, in fact, when you add it all up, you can actually find that to be a finite sum fixed number. Let's do a, one last example here so you can really see that in action. This is so neat. You can actually add up infinitely many things. This is just wonderful. Just wonderful. So let's take a look at the following example. Suppose that a1 equals 10, and then the ratio is 1 fourth. What is the sum of all these terms? So the sum of all the terms would be, well, the first 10 divided by 1 minus the ratio, which is 1 fourth. Now what is that? Well, that's 10 divided by, what's 1 minus a fourth? Well, 1 is actually 4 fourths. 4 over 4. 4 over 4 minus 1 over 4 is 3 over 4. And then what do you do here? You invert and multiply. Whoop. And so what you get is 10 times 4 thirds, which equals 40 over 3. 40 over 3. That is the exact value of what you get if you add up all the terms, all the terms in the geometric series that start this way. And what is that series? That series looks like this. It starts with 10, and then 10 times a fourth, and then 10 times a fourth squared, and then 10 times a fourth cubed. And you do this forever. You never stop. And if you add all those terms up, if you add up all those terms, and you never stop, you get 40 over 3. You get a finite number, even though they're infinitely many terms. And the reason is because each term, you'll notice, is getting really, really small pretty fast. right? Already, this, for example, is 10 divided by 16. That's really small. And they're getting much, much smaller. So you can actually add up infinitely many terms when the ratio in the geometric series in absolute value is less than 1. Here's the formula. If the ratio is in absolute value is not less than 1, so it equals 1 or is bigger, then you can't sum those things up because things start to get too big. But if you're confined to this little teeny region for the ratio, you can actually do infinitely many things in finitely many steps. That is really cool. Neat. Anyway, enjoy infinite series of geometric series, and I'll see you.